Hey, what's going on everyone? Check this out. This little tiny All Powers R600 299 watt hour solar generator can charge from that All Powers 400 watt panel. Now it's gonna not take in the full input, but that's amazing that this little guy here can accept up to 60 volts of input. That's crazy for a little tiny solar generator like this. But that's amazing because you can use a large panel like that even on shady days and still get good input into this unit because that solar panel there is 45.3 volts open circuit current and like i said this can accept from 12 to 60 volts 12 amp max now this unit is limited to 300 watts of input i am getting actually 315 watts on the display but if you look at my meter here that i have plugged in in line it's showing 300 watts on the money so it's taking in 300 watts like i said from that 400 watt panel and it's a really late day sun's way over there not really good ideal situations for the sun but like i said it's getting full maximum input that it's capable of right now at 300 watts 313 315 on the display so that's amazing guys this thing can probably charge up in like an hour with solar because it's only 299 watt hours of energy so with this thing getting 300 watts of input this thing should charge up in like one hour now if you are charging this up from solar if you guys do buy one make sure that you have it set to fast mode in the app if you're charging with solar because if not if you're set to mute mode this thing will only charge at like 100 and some watts and you will not get full potential from the sun's power into this unit so keep that in mind as you adjust the charge rate which you can do in the app on your cell phone there are three modes there's mute mode standard mode and fast mode and like i said that also adjusts your charge rate coming from your solar as well so if you notice that it's not charging up really fast and it's a bright sunny day you might be in the wrong mode in that app so mute mode charges at 118 watts either solar or ac power standard mode will charge at 326 watts from ac however i noticed when it's on standard mode you only get about 280 to 295 watts in from solar and then fast mode will charge at 430 watts from ac but it is capped, like I said, to 300 watts of solar. So if you want the maximum potential charging this thing up as fast as possible, especially if you're using solar, make sure you're on fast mode. Now, if you're in no hurry, I would recommend not using fast mode from AC because you'll just prolong the life of this battery if you keep it in mute mode or standard mode. But that's amazing that this thing will charge up in somewhere around an hour with either solar or AC from your home. Man, I need a pair of sunglasses on today. That sun is bright. But I just started this test not that long ago. I started it at like 26% and I'm already up to 70% on the display here. So really nice quick charging there. You can see 313 watts and 70%. Free energy, gotta love it. And like I said, mute mode, if you're on that mode and you're plugged into AC, it's gonna take you about three hours and 17 minutes according to my testing to charge that little guy up. Standard mode from AC is gonna be about an hour and a half and fast mode will be about an hour and 15 minutes. And that's if you're charging from AC. So really cool there. Now, one thing I did notice about this thing is that the fan is super loud in it. There's not really a slow variable speed mode on this thing. So when that fan kicks on, it's pretty loud. So if you are thinking about getting something to run something at night next to your bedside, if your power goes out, not quite sure this is going to be the unit because it might keep you up at night when those fans kick on. I did mention it to them and hopefully they can update that in the future. So as I said, this little guy has a 299 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery which is really nice to see with a 3000 recharge cycle to 80 percent battery capacity so this thing should last you many many years of regular use and this little guy can put out 600 watts continuously and up to 1200 watts peak all right so now i'm running the all powers at max capacity about 600 watts i'm going to run it for five minutes straight it's at two and a half minutes currently it's outputting 110 volts and 59.7 hertz and you can see it's a pure sine wave nice and clean output three minutes and 30 seconds
587 watts output. You can hear them fans running pretty much at full speed. No issues at all so far. Outputting almost max capacity, 600 watts. All right, five minutes straight, actually five minutes and 22 seconds. 586 watts of output, still holding steady at 110 volts. No problem. All right, so let's take a look and see what all you get with this thing. So up here on the top, you have a nice handle for carrying and you do have a 15 watt wireless charging pad here. One thing I wanna mention is that with my phone, it didn't seem to work. I have this charging ring on my case. It would pick it up, but it would not really charge it. It did work with my son's phone okay, with his phone being out of the case. But sometimes when you move it slightly off of there, it seems to uh, disconnect. So that would have been nice to maybe have a little bit of a stronger charging pad on top, but it will work if your phone does not have a case. Just be mindful of where your phone's sitting and don't bump it off. Down here on the front of the unit, you have a 12 volt socket. You have two 55, 21, 10 amp outputs here and that's really nice because a lot of units only have a three amp output and i actually like to run my 12 volt coolers off of the 5521 plug instead of running them off of here so that's nice to see that it's 10 amps you have two ac outputs like i said 600 watts max between the two of those you have two usb-c 100 watt power delivery outputs and you also have two usb-a 18 watt ports here. There's a nice little light on the front that you could turn on so you, that you could see what you're doing here when you're hooking things up. Really nice to see. I always like little lights in the front. That way you can use this thing while you're out camping if you're in a tent or whatnot. I hate when units don't include at least some kind of little light in them. And it does have two different modes. It has on and off and then if you hold the button in you do have an SOS mode. Over here on the side, you have your AC input, which will charge at up to 430 watts max at a rate of an, about an hour and 15 minutes if you're on fast mode. You have a protection circuit breaker in the center there. And then you have your XT60 connector here, which you can input 12 to 60 volts, 12 amp max for a maximum wattage of 300 watts of input through that connection there and this thing does have pass-through charging if you're charging from either ac or dc you could turn the power outlets on and it actually has a ups mode where if you're charging through ac and your power goes out this thing will automatically switch over and continue to run off of this unit until it dies all right now we're going to try ups mode with my son's gaming computer and see if it shuts off whenever I unplug this. You can see right now I have it plugged in. It's getting 66 watts of input, 72 watts of output. It's actually drawing 154 watts from the wall because it's supplying the power to the computer through this unit. And it's using 66 watts of that to charge this unit up. I'm gonna go ahead, shut the power off coming into this unit here and see if the computer continues to run. Zero watts of input. It quit charging and it is still running the computer just fine. This is a cord going to the power strip for the computer down there. And two more things I want to mention is that All Powers also gives you this MC4 to XT60 connector to connect the solar panel, give you a nice little carry case. And the cord to charge this up does not have a brick. All you need is the cable to charge the unit. The brick is built into the All Powers R600. Really nice to see. Let's get back to it. Now to get that UPS mode turned on, you do have to turn the outlets on before you plug the unit into your wall to charge and you will see the little UPS light on the front come on and then it will be in UPS mode. If you plug the unit in to charge without turning the outlets on, the outlets will come on and it'll provide pass through charging, but it will not be in UPS mode and will not revert over to this if your power dies. So keep that in mind. So overall guys, it is a nice little unit. There is one thing I wanna mention though. When I received it, it was completely dead. When I took it out of the box and hit the power button, it would not come on, it would not do anything. When I plugged it into a solar panel, it started to charge and then it would give me an error code and then I could turn the unit on, turn the light on, things like that. But as soon as I would unplug it, it would shut off. So I plugged it into AC power and it did the same. It gave me the same error codes. So I kept unplugging it and plugging it in, turning it on, turning it off, doing all kind of crazy stuff for like five minutes. And then eventually 
I just left it plugged in for like 30 minutes. I came back and then it was working as it should. So I just think it was so dead when I got it that that BMS wasn't sensing uh, to charge it or something. I don't know. It was just throwing some kind of error code though. And uh, that was basically the only problem I had with it. Ever since then, it, it's been working good. Now I did have to do about two or three complete discharge and recharges for it to calibrate the display and the batteries. But according to my testing, I've been testing this thing now for a few weeks. I did a few capacity tests with it. The first test I did was not very good. I ran an 80 watt load, which was my 55 inch TV for two hours and 19 minutes. And I got 170 watt hours from it, which was 57% efficiency. But like I said, I had to do a few recharge cycles for it to calibrate because I don't think the percent meter was reading right. And I think it was not charging up all the way. The second test I ran, I ran 184 watt load for an hour and 20 minutes for a total of 230 watt hours of capacity. And that was 77% efficient. So you can see there it got a little bit better with that charge cycle. Now the third one I ran a heated blanket for nine hours and seven minutes at 145 watts intermittent intermittently the blanket would kick on and off and i got 150 watt hours which was only 50 percent efficient so that wasn't very good either guys and part of it was because it was a nine hour test and with no load on this unit you do have about 11 percent loss every three hours just with the ac outlets being on and it not using any power to power any device the parasitic drain on the AC inverter when it is turned on, like I said, is about 11% every three hours. So I lost 33% in those nine hours just from the AC inverter being turned on. So that's probably part of the reason why I only got 150 watt hours from it that time. The fourth test I ran, and I know this is a lot of tests guys, but I wanted to make sure I got some good numbers here. The fourth test I ran my TV in a small heated blanker for, for an hour and 56 minutes and got 240 watt hours for 80% efficiency. So that was a really good one there. And then the fifth test, I ran a 600 watt load for five minutes, which I showed you guys that earlier. And then I ran a continuous 300 watt load and used 240 watt hours, which was 80% efficient. So two of the tests, I got 80% and two of the tests, I got 50 to 57%. So I would say on average, it's gonna be anywhere between 50 to 80% efficient, depending on what type of load you're running, how many watts you're running through it at a time, and how long you have that AC inverter turned on. If you're only gonna turn it on and power a few things and turn it back off, you should get pretty good capacity out of it. If you turn it on and leave it set on for a while, you will lose a little bit for that inverter being turned on, which is pretty normal with most solar generators. You do have some losses from the inverter being turned on, but just something I wanted to mention. Now the DC inverter power draw is very, very good. I had it on pretty much a whole day and only lost 1% of charge. So if you could power your things through DC instead of the AC ports when you're charging stuff or running stuff, I recommend highly of doing that. Like if you had a heated blanket that ran on DC instead of AC, it would last way longer than if you're trying to use the AC inverter to power a heated blanket. So keep that in mind, the DC inverter would be really good for running a cooler or something like that. So overall guys, yeah, after I got through getting this thing charged up initially, um, working pretty good. I'm really impressed with the 300 watts that it can accept for being so small and the voltage that it will accept. I was really happy with that. I'm gonna be doing a review on this thing here too. Like I said, this is the all power 400 watt panel, excellent price compared to what else is out there. But we'll be going over all the specs and details of that and showing you guys what it can do into some different power stations. So if you guys found this video interesting, wanna learn about e-bikes, solar, repairing things, or just things that I think can be helpful to you, make sure you guys stick around, subscribe, and watch some more videos. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you guys are interested in picking one of these up, I'll put a link down below with a coupon code. It will be an affiliate link, so I will receive a small commission if you do decide to purchase one of these. But thanks for the support.